women's sports, hockey fans rejoice. There are 21 days to go before the new NHL season begins. For women who love hockey, present company, this is a big year because on October 11th, the National Women's Hockey League kicks off its inaugural season. It is the first women's league in North America to pay its players a salary. Joining me now is the league's commissioner and founder, Danny Ryland. Danny, thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for having me on. So you've got, what, four teams across the Northeast uh, U.S. and more than 70 players under contract. Tell us about what's involved here. The, there's a spending cap. There's a minimum salary. There's free agency, right? Yes. Um, everything that the men's professional team has, um, we have in our league as well. So, um, yeah, the founding four teams will play in Boston, Buffalo, Stanford, Connecticut, and here in New York City. And uh, it's an 18-game season, so a shorter season than the NHL season. But um, we are kicking off in October. And and, uh, you know, we're so excited. There's um, been a lot of hard work that's gone into it. Um, and seeing it all come to reality has been such a such an exciting moment. And in March, is it March, they, they will lift the Isabel Trophy? The, the Isabel, Isabel Cup. Cup, yes, yes. All right, mm -hmm. sounds good. This is not the first uh, NWHL. There was a previous league in Canada by the same name that existed uh, from 1999 to 2007. But you're not related, are you? No, we're not. Okay. You will have a competitive advantage over the Canadian Women's Hockey League in that you are a professional league where women, uh, they're, the cost of their equipment is basically covered. Yes, uh, so this is the first time that women in North America will get paid for being the best at what they do. Uh, so like you were saying, we have a salary cap and an, a minimum salary, an average salary. What's the minimum and salary? The minimum salary is 10000 a year. Um, the salary cap is 270000 So I think our highest paid player this year will be making around $22,000 um, for the six-month season. So a huge step um, mm -hmm. for the game of women's hockey and, um, you know, like I said, just paying the women for being the best at what they do. But at the same time, everyone who is a pro player in this league basically has a full-time job as well. Um, for, the, for the most part, a lot of women will have jobs 9 to 5 as well. Um with playing our practices twice a week, games on the weekend. Um, so we are, we're not making the full step towards, uh, you know, the full grind of an 82-game season, but uh, <laughs> definitely a first step. That would be a tall order, especially those who have families. Yes. Um, you played two years of NCAA hockey at Northeastern, and full disclosure, I started playing hockey about 15 years ago, and I'm going to be trying out for a D-League team uh, <laughs> this weekend, and that's me 15 years ago. Um, I wanted to awesome. get from you, Danny. What inspired you to go from playing college hockey to starting a professional women's league? You know, I'm not too far removed from my playing career, and uh, a lot of my friends were playing in other leagues after they were done with their college career. And, you know, there was just this huge missed opportunity for continued development. Um, women peak athletically when they're 27 years old, mm. but a lot of uh, college careers will end when the women are 21, 22. So there's all that missed development, missed opportunity for these players to actually reach their peak. And, uh, you know, it, it started out as an idea, and before I knew it, um, the whole hockey community was really behind me. And uh, so I started reaching out to my network, and everyone was like, Danny, you have to have to roll with this. This is what you have to do. Just keep going. And uh, the entrepreneur in me wouldn't really let me turn around. I just had to keep going. And how, how did you go about finding funding? Uh, so we are uh, privately funded the first year. Um, a lot of people also see this as a, a business opportunity. Uh, so this first year we're privately funded, and, and then after this we're looking for uh, the right sponsors to jump on board and uh, support the, the, what we're doing here. So you're wheeling and dealing, and yeah. you're certainly trying to market this league beyond uh, hockey women, which admittedly is a bit of a limited market. What do you find is the biggest misconception as you, as you negotiate and wheel and deal out there? I think um, that it's a limited market may be the biggest misconception. Hmm. Uh, you know, 13% of all USA hockey registration uh, is comprised of girls and women, which is a significant number, and it's just exponentially growing throughout the years. Um, and then a third of all those registrations are actually in the Northeast here, which is why we tapped into to this market. And um, uh, did you watch the gold medal game, the women's U.S.? Of course. Yes, of course. So um, a disappointment for the U.S. team, but a, a great hockey game. Exactly. You know, a lot of people will say they weren't watching that hockey game because it was a men's game or a women's game. They watched it because it was such an amazing hockey game. Uh, and actually, 4.9 million viewers watched it. It was the most watched event on NBC, uh, which That's says notable. a lot for the sport um, and a lot of uh, the game how it's evolved even over the last 10 years I'm sure you've seen it between the 2010 Olympics and the mm -hmm. 2014 uh, the game on the ice the actual product um, you know that the women have really done this for themselves this they've has picked up a lot exactly it's evolved so much and um, 
you know, they'll say that what I always tell people is uh, during the Olympics, some people were watching in a bar or wherever around the U.S. and they wouldn't realize they were watching a women's game until they zoomed in and you'd see the mascara on their faces or their ponytails <laughs> behind their jerseys and you're like, wow, and then that, the women's game is really That evolved. was shocking for a lot of people who didn't yeah. realize that the level of athleticism is certainly there. Um, in addition to being commissioner, Danny, you're also general manager of the most high-profile team, the New York Riveters, and you will be playing in Brooklyn along with another pro hockey team, the, the Islanders. Yes. <laughs> yes, those guys. <laughs> Uh, you'll be playing in not not the same rink though. You're not going to be at the Barclays no. Center. No, we're not going to be at the Barclays Center. We're going to be at um, Aviator Sports um, in Brooklyn, and uh, so it's a 1,500 to 2,000 seat capacity, kind of depending on how it's set up for the game night. And um, yeah, we're we're looking to sell it out and really rock the house. And we're so excited to bring hockey to Brooklyn. Uh, you know, we went from zero teams to two teams um, in kind of the blink of an eye. So absolutely, uh, now four exciting. teams. Now, yep. <laughs> Final question to you: uh, Some of your fellow commissioners in pro sports have had a kind of rough year. I'm thinking. Rob Roger Goodell of the NFL. Gary Bettman hasn't always been a, a favored commissioner. How do you think a league, any leagues, any professional women's league would benefit uh, from having a woman run the show? Maybe not just a women's league, a professional sports league. You know, I don't really think that it's, um, I don't think it's male or female. I think it's really just getting the job done and kind of setting yourself up for success and um, having a group around you um, supporting you and kind of helping with those um, the, the, the big decisions and um, you know I think you know Gary Bettman has been extremely helpful with our league and um, really? he's, what a did huge, he tell you? Uh, he's a huge supporter of women's hockey um, from the grassroots level all the way to the pros and uh, I know that he definitely sees something in the future um, with the NHL supporting um, professional hockey so I think that uh, I, I he may have a bad rap but he's definitely um, tops in your book yeah he's tops in my book